Hi, I'm Patrick Van Hull. Welcome back to 3 Minutes of Supply Chain. This is the second video in a two-part series on global trade and product movement. Today we're going to look at the current state of ocean freight and what it means for end-to-end -end supply chain planning. In reviewing data for air transport, I found it interesting that while there was still a drop-off for ocean trade during Q2 of 2020, it followed what the IATA calls a typical pattern during downturns, where buyers favor cost over speed thus choosing ocean over air. As a result, the relative market share of ocean trade grew significantly when compared to that of air cargo. As per a June 2020 Wall Street Journal article, in anticipation of that fall off in demand, ocean carriers began to cancel shipments and reduce the number of containers and sailings available. Consulting firm C Intelligence CEO Lars Jensen is quoted in the article saying that the expectation is that volumes will be down 10% for the year overall. Although an August Wall Street Journal article stated that the decline in sailings February through July was closer to 30%. However, unlike the airline industry, where profit was already down and is expected to be down going forward, the shipping industry is making things work to their advantage. In August, AP Moeller Maersk reported that it tripled its net profit for the second quarter. Yes, tripled. Despite lower demand of roughly 10%, they actually cut their capacity by 20%. As reduced capacity drove rates up and fuel costs stayed low, Maersk saw increased efficiency and utilization. As their CEO put it, we managed our network like UPS and FedEx, adjusting capacity to demand. While the function and purpose are similar, the situation with ocean trade sounds quite different from that of air cargo, leading me to three takeaways for the rest of supply chain. One, supply chain planning needs to consider just how volatile these markets can be. In many cases, pricing is aligned to specific indices or other publicly available measures, which can be used as possible indicators of what's to come. Given that this would be something new and different, it could be a great opportunity to test out AI, ML, or other advanced analytics tools. Accessing the data isn't enough. It needs to be integrated into the planning and decision-making platform, just like many of the other possible end-to-end -end inputs. This best of breed solution may feel like a big ask, but consider the cost and impact of continuing to lag far behind disruptions like these because incomplete information is used. And finally, Maersk proved that supply chain agility <clears throat> isn't important for business to survive disruptions alone. By knowing their options and taking quick, decisive action, their planning processes actually drove triple the profit. As supply chains further cement their roles as the driver of growth, it's going to be crucial to use all of the data available to know sooner what is happening and what to do about it. And finally, to act faster on what is most critically important to the business.